So this is the location that I'm going to be snorkeling at today and my main target for today is going to be to take photos and videos of sea turtles and I'm going to be using my new GoPro 11 and my Sony a7 III as usual to take the photos and videos and I'm hoping that I can get some POV footage with this GoPro that I'm recording on right now so that I can show you guys the behind the scenes of how I take photos underwater. So all these buttons on the housing let me change the settings of my Sony a7 III. And here I'm adjusting the settings because I need to change them depending on the condition of the ocean. And I can't really see that until I get into the water like this. So this was actually the first time I snorkeled at this particular beach so I did a little bit of research in advance so I knew which areas were safe and which areas were kind of unsafe to go to. And here I'm kind of just snorkeling towards the reef area which is a little bit further out. So I found this school of reef fish right here, so I took a couple photos here just to see how the photos were turning out. And I think I reached the coral reef area once I swam out for about 5 more minutes. So I'm going to skip to that area where I actually start to find some more animals where I can take photos of. So this was the first sea turtle I came across on this particular session and I'm not sure if you can see him but he's kind of resting under that piece of coral over there. So I took a couple of photos and because he seemed to be resting I left him alone and went to look for a different sea turtle which was actually swimming around as they usually make for better photo objects. Also, all the photos that are coming up on the screen probably look a slightly different colour to the underwater footage taken on the GoPro and that's because I've colour corrected and kind of edited them in Lightroom afterwards so that's why the colours kind of look more vibrant and there's less blues and greens in the photos compared to the video footage. If you would like to see the process of how I edit my underwater photos then you can check out this video right here. And in this video, I talk through my underwater photo editing process using a software called Adobe Lightroom. This particular sea turtle was really good for taking photos because he didn't seem to be too bothered with me being around. What I am trying to do here is I'm trying to keep my movements and my noise as very quiet as possible so I don't suddenly scare the turtle away. And as long as you kind of just float there and don't cause too many movements, most animals when you're underwater kind of let you get close to them like this. right here I decided that I wanted to take some videos with the GoPro Hero 11 so that's why I have switched to the GoPro instead of the camera and the footage on the screen right now is the footage that was taken on the GoPro Hero 11. The settings that I use to take these videos with the GoPro Hero 11 can be found in this video over here so if you'd like to know the settings that I use for my GoPro when recording underwater then please check this video out as well. Thank you. 
I think over here I tried to get some different angled shots. I had already gotten shots of the turtles from like the front and from behind, so this time I tried a bird's eye view shot, like these shots which are coming up on the screen right now. And I really liked how these ones turned out, especially the ones which I edited afterwards in Lightroom like this one. One thing I was pretty surprised about when I was uh, snorkeling at the Miyakojima Islands was that there were a ton of sea snakes around in the area and I'm not sure if you know but they're very venomous compared to the snakes that you can find on land so you usually would die if they bite you but they're also not aggressive so as long as you don't kind of aggravate them they're not going to be coming to bite you out of their way so same with the other turtles, I tried not to make any sudden movements with my fins and as long as I don't scare it, it's not going to make any sudden movements towards me usually and that's why I'm kind of in this distance with this sea snake. Still it would probably be best to kind of keep a distance and avoid them as much as possible, especially if you're not used to kind of being underwater with these animals. And I think this is going to be about it for this video. Thank you so much for watching all the way through. Please do let me know what you thought about the video in the comment section below if you would like. And as always, I will see you in the next video.